Well, hello and welcome everybody again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time, um, Brian Brazil, um, who is one of the core contributors to the Prometheus Project um, and the founder of Robust Perceptions, uh, the, a new member of the OpenShift Commons, is joining us today and he's going to give us an overview of Prometheus. So the format of this is he's going to take it away, give a bit of a presentation, a little bit of a demo um, of working with it in the context of OpenShift. Um, and then we'll have an open Q&A afterwards. You'll notice, because um, we're using blue jeans, there is a chat, so you can ask questions in the chat. Um, I will try and repeat them all and in the Q&A and open it up um, for a conversation afterwards. So with that, Brian, take it away, and thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Dan. So, a little bit of an echo stream here. Uh, so I'm one of the four core developers of Prometheus. I found Robust Perception, which uh, does, you know, try and do consulting and support route for supporting open source. I contributed to many open source projects over the years, and I did work in Google for a while as well here in Dublin. Uh, so Prometheus was founded in 2012 by Matt Proud and Julius Balls, who were located in Berlin at the time. And like in 2013, it started as, as a side project. And in 2013, they took it into SoundCloud, where they're working for at the time, expanded it to support Bazooka, which you can consider to be kind of like OpenShift. Um, and they added cl instrumentation clients for Go, Java, and Ruby, which was what was used inside SoundCloud at the time. In 2014, uh, other companies started to use it, including myself. And we had Johannes in Docker, which is another component of uh, OpenShift. Uh, we have a new storage system, the V2 storage, and a new text format, which we're still using today. And then in 2015, we publicly released uh, because previously everything was on GitHub and it was there, uh, but we didn't really tell a lot of people. But since then, we've seen quite an uptick in usage. So to give you an example, uh, there are about 300 contributors to the core repositories. We have it's actually over 150 third party integrations. Uh, we've got several hundred people on the mailing list in IRC. And it's always hard to tell with open source software, but we figured there's over 500 companies using Prometheus in production. And there are several companies, uh, including my own, uh, funding Prometheus development. In fact, there was a recent stat that came out as well that Prometheus is 56th in the world for open source contributions, sort of like the 56th biggest project, which is a bit of a surprise. Right? On top is Linux itself. So Prometheus, what is it? Uh, so it's a metrics monitoring system. It doesn't do logs. It doesn't do tracing. Uh, it's not a profiler. It's at its core a time series database with a query language. It has client libraries uh, to get the data in and a general ecosystem. And in general, it's looking for a cloud native approach to monitoring services. The basic architecture is you've got Prometheus in the middle. It's talking to Kubernetes or OpenShift to figure out where everything is, going out to applications or exporters, putting in all the data, storing it locally, sending out alerts and offering that up for graphing. If you look over the last 20 years, service management, it used to be the case, your system ins were manually configuring everything on the machines. And then we went to things like Chef. And then we went to Kubernetes, which is a step up again, where we're just moving ourselves further and further away from the individual machine, the individual process. And we need to do the same thing for monitoring. We need to not look at every single machine and, oh, that CPU is high, but actually care about, hey, end users care about latency and error rates. Let's look at those rather than distracting ourselves with alerts for things which fundamentally don't matter to the end user. We have to look at what's the ROI of looking at a particular alert. So in terms of integration into Kubernetes, which is to say OpenShift, uh, Grease can discover all the pods, services, everything automatic from the Kubernetes cluster and put in all the labels of annotations because both Kubernetes and Prometheus have a label-based data model, so that meshes nicely. And Prometheus will automatically pick up the changes. So you can just set it up once in principle and have everything happen via magic from there on in. Uh, then to add your actual application, uh, you need to instrument your code to capture the metrics that matter to you. Because sure, it's great to know that the CPU works because we can do that out of the box, but you care about, hey, how many times is this cache being hit? Or how many times is it a paying versus a non-paying order? And that sort of thing. And the great thing is if everyone instruments and you're using the libraries which are instrumented, well, you get that for free. You get those instrumentations. For things that aren't instrumented, because, well, it's not likely we'll get our code inside MySQL, uh, there's exporters which will convert between them. So lots of integrations there. SNMP for your network stuff, console, JMX, HAProxy. 
and of course Minecraft and Factorio if you're having a little bit of fun. And incidentally, Minecraft is started by a friend of mine, actually started a new server last night, um, to figure out how well his Minecraft server is performing because he uses a lot of mods. Uh, so as well, if you look across the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, Kubernetes, to give you an idea of the sort of integrations that are out there and how prevalent integrations with Prometheus are, uh, Kubernetes itself is instrumented with Prometheus, so we integrate with each other. And so you can monitor the health of the cluster. Linkerd has metrics in our format and has interceptors for gRPC and plugins for Fluentd. So now we've got all your applications either directly or via an exporter providing data. We've discovered them all from the Kubernetes service discovery. What do we do with all this data? We have the PromQL query language, uh, which can do basically any math you want on time series data. It can aggregate, it can join series together, it can slice things, and it can do some predictions like how close you are to your quota. Like I'm going to run out of space in four hours is more interesting than am I at 95% of my quota because you could be at 95% for years or aggregating across an entire data center for latency. Another key point is that there's no distinction in Prometheus between graphing and alerting. It's the same expression language. So if you can graph something, you can alert on it. So here is an example of a more complicated query that you would have in Prometheus. So this is taking an example of uh, CPU usage in Docker containers and getting that per container, summing that up by Docker image, not by machine, not by service, not by user, not by data center, but Docker image, and getting the top five. So you could figure out which containers you might want to use some better optimization flags for, as an example. Then, okay, you've got your alerts. But the thing is that not every alert should necessarily result in a notification. You can imagine if you had a rack failure with 100 machines in it, you don't want to receive 100 pages because that's just silly. Uh, so you can actually group alerts together that are related and only get one alert for that rack failure or maybe one alert for every machine that happens to be currently failing in that data center with you know hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of machines. Route them to the right team and then shot the notifications so you're not spamming person every minute that, hey, this is still firing because that really doesn't help a human who's just gotten a page about a rack being down. It's also designed to work reliably during network partitions. Uh, so the whole architecture is around reliability, such that even if your network is falling apart, we will do our utmost to make sure you get your notifications. You might get some duplicates, but that's better than getting nothing. So to summarize then, Prometheus, it's a metrics monitoring system, a time series database, uh, a local query language, the client libraries for your data, and an ecosystem of exporters and so on because we're trying to promote here a cloud-native approach to monitoring services, because caring about individual pods or individual machines is not sane in a highly dynamic infrastructure like OpenShift. Uh, there is some links there as well. The slides will be up later so you can look at it. Uh, so I'd like to just show you through a bit of a demo. So you may wonder, how easy is it to instrument things with Prometheus? So we're going to use an example from Python. So this is included in client Python at the top. So I'm just going to copy and paste this off screen and run that then. OK, that's running. So this is just importing the basics, tracking request time, just a dummy function that's sleeping for a while, server for exposition, and just some random requests. So very simple example. But the core lines of code are here and the decorator here. And if we go there, there are a pile of metrics. So we get a whole pile of metrics for free from Python, like lots of CPU, when it starts, file scriptures. And then here are two metrics. So we've had 39 queries so far, which took a total of 18.7 seconds of worth of time. So that, those three lines of code here are just how easy, or these two lines is how easy it is to instrument your code. And you can then sprinkle that liberally across your code base. So now we can look at OpenShift. So here we've set up C Advisor, which is what you should be using to get all your container stats. And there's a Prometheus as well running here. Now, what's interesting, if you look at the config file, so this is the, just change this so it's a little longer than usual. But this here has not been hard coded to know where things are. It's actually dynamically pulling in everything from Kubernetes and then just putting out a node. It's finding all the C advisors and using them. So you end up also discovering your C advisors, also discovering all your machines, your node exporter get machine metrics. 
So as machines are added and removed, it'll automatically show up. Now here, I've just got OC uh, running on my desktop, so there's only one node, but this approach would work no matter how many machines I had, and it automatically show up as machines are added and removed, so there's no management beyond the initial setup. So we've got some graphs here. So here's some uh, container stats. Stop putting out too much. Uh, here we have the node exporter. So these are machine stats. We can see how much CPU there is, how much memory is being used, the disk utilization on my three disks and the CD drive, which is empty, and all the file systems. And it's also predicting here as well when my file systems will fill up. As it turns out, my home desktop, nothing's going to fill up, so everything's reducing in size, which is kind of handy for once. And as well, Prometheus itself also exposes a whole ton of metrics. Now, this is a very deep dashboard that I actually use for benchmarking Prometheus, uh, but this is a sort of insight you can start to get off an application. You can see all the key metrics about the Prometheus to know about its performance. Uh, and this is a pretty well instrumented binary. Uh, so that's the main things I wanted to show you. Uh, so are there any questions? There haven't been any questions in chat yet, so I'm going to ask a couple myself. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and we were talking a little bit about this beforehand as well. Um, the How does the open tracing project surface in Prometheus, and how is that related to that, this project? Uh, so, open tracing and Prometheus are separate because they're kind of different approaches to monitoring. So, uh, Prometheus, it's all about metrics, so time series, we're tracking individual pieces of information over time. Open tracing, by contrast, is about tracing. Uh, so what that means is we're tracking a single request as it passes through a distributed system. Because if you're getting into a tail latencies and that sort of thing, or hey, a cache was hit here which causes all these knock-on behaviors, things can get very complex. So when you've got something like open tracing, you could produce a graph that looks something like this and actually see, oh right, which servers, where are all the slow blitz? And tracing does that. Whereas Prometheus would more tell you that, hey, 95th percentile latency is blah. And then you use tracing to say, okay, give me an exemplar of when it's slow and I can dig down into it. So we are actually planning on using open tracing inside Prometheus, uh, largely for our queries. We want something in memory that will trace them. So we can say, hey, here's my slow queries and a few other components. But it's kind of two different views of the same data because a metrics-based approach is going to look and say, right, you've got all these requests coming in. I'm going to throw away most of the information because it's not efficient to keep it around, but I'll be able to tell you for each pass and each HTTP method what the average latency is, what the byte sizes are, and so on. So you can get an idea of the general trend. A logging-based approach will be tracking every single one of those requests, but it can't track you know, every single function that goes into because that'll be too much bandwidth. And then tracing is kind of a logs-based approach, but stitching together logs across machines to track a request for its entire lifecycle. So that's kind of where the uh, kind of the three different styles of monitoring you have between tracing, logging, and metrics. Well, the, the reason that comes up for me um, as a someone asked me the other day about integrating. Um, you, you have Zip, Zip in up here, but also integrating um, Jaeger into. Prometheus. It sounds like that's not something you would do. Um, so yeah. it, the, uh, there are some similar call sites you'd want, like if you have a HTTP routing, the HTTP router with your code, you might want to both instrument it for open tracing and say, hey, here's a span, which is what, you know, each of these here is a span, and also at the same time, increment of Prometheus metrics. So potentially, this has been done, there'll be a little library that does both, but you wouldn't necessarily want to do that all the time, but that's where the similarity is because they're fundamentally instrumentation, but for different goals, uh, a lot of the call sites might be the same. Okay, cool. Well, there's a couple of questions that are coming in. Um, and the first one is, can you provide a comparative feature set for Prometheus compared with Elk and Grafana? Um, okay, so that's kind of a number of different tools there. So Grafana is a dashboarding solution. It is what we recommend for usage with Prometheus and these demonstrations here, this is all Grafana. Uh, um, so that's what we recommend. Uh, we kind of see them as partners. We used to actually have our own dashboarding system called Prom Dash for Prometheus, but we deprecated it in favor of Grafana because, well, why develop one of those when someone else is a better one already? Uh, in terms of Elk, well, the K is Cabana, which is a competitor to Grafana. I believe their feature sets are relatively similar. 
Uh, but then the bigger difference really, because Grafana is a different team, is between Prometheus and Elasticsearch. And the difference is that Prometheus is a metrics-based monitoring system and the ELK stack is normally for logs. And these are two different views of monitoring. Uh, because with Prometheus instrumentation, you might have inside your binary, like a well-instrumented binary is going to have hundreds to thousands of code points that are instrumented. Uh, but it's only tracking like simple counters of how many times is this line of code executed. <coughs> and you can get that for basically all your system that works nicely. And that's metrics-based monitoring. Logs, for example, you couldn't have 10,000 pieces of information about every single request coming in because it would just be too much bandwidth, both disk and network. You might get 50 to 100, but you can get every single individual request. And that's where Elkshine is then the logs-based approach. So they're really complementary systems because the way out I see it is use something like Prometheus or a different metrics-based system to figure out roughly where the problem is and drill down. And then you figure out, okay, I've drilled down. I can see things were slow. You've looked a bit. It's all the billing endpoints. Then I'm going to go over to Elk and see, all right, so who's been making billing requests? Which ones are slow? Ah, it's these exact requests from these users. Go have a chat with them. So they're very complementary solutions. You need you need a metric system and a logging system. I think you, I think you just answered one of the next questions. Um, do you see Prometheus as a solution, a full monitoring solution for OpenShift? And I think from your previous answer is you need probably both um, yeah, logging yeah. and metrics. Um, there, yeah, you, um, you can also do uh, black box monitoring with Prometheus via the black box exporter. Uh, so that's your very simple, is it turned on probes, like HTTP checks, ICMP checks, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just something you, you can do with Prometheus and works out. Uh, but you also need a tracing tool, something based on open tracing. You're also going to need profiling tools like your GDB, your CPROF, and all that as well, uh, and source code so you can compare all these back to the source code to see where your performance problem is. And there is no one tool that does everything. You need a selection of these tools to tackle different parts of your problem. We need a Leatherman tool for mon mon monitoring. Um, there's another question here. Can all components you demoed be instantiated inside of OpenShift? If so, um, is there a Git repo with a good README to duplicate your efforts here? So if someone wants to... Okay, so all the components, there is actually a blog post on the Robust Perception blog, which I used to do some of this. Um, all the components can be done inside OpenShift. However, the node exporter, which is our machine agent, we recommend not running under Docker. The reason why is that Docker is trying to hide things about the machine, and the node exporter is trying to get information about the machine, so they're kind of... Uh, conflicting there, so we recommend running the node exporter on bare metal. You can run it inside uh, inside Docker, you just don't get quite as good stats. Uh, in terms of how to duplicate the efforts, you know, there's a blog post and Jen is just uh, tweaking things to your setup. There's examples inside the Prometheus documentation directory, for example. Okay. Um, Shiresh is asking, how can I constrain my instrumentation to class versus method level? Uh, so usually, you would be instrumenting not classes or methods, but like if statements or at that level, because you're going in personally choosing what things are important to you from like a business or engineering level. If you're trying to instrument every method or every class, that's getting into profiling. And profiling, because ultimately in monitoring, everything is in the bench. So we've got this thing is happening at this time with this context, where the context is the entire call stack, the full HTTP request, everything. Logs works by taking about 50 pieces of those information and storing all of them for every event. Metrics instead just temporarily compresses them. Profiling just says, give me everything. Uh, and it's just so much data that you have to take either the logs trade off, the metrics trade off, or only turn it on briefly because it's going to kill your performance. So you kind of have to be careful about how much things you're uh, monitoring. Uh, but the really valuable stuff is more to do with business logic than every single method in class because that's like CPU profiling at some point, which is a different beast. So there's uh, another question um, that just came in. That's a great explanation of the class method one. Um, can you compare Prometheus with Heapster Hocular? Um, okay, so those are two different uh, tools. Screen locking up a bit. Um, so if you look at Kubernetes itself, the metrics are provided by the Prometheus format. Um, the thing is, though, that that's not great if you're running a graphite. 
or an InfluxDB, although InfluxDB now actually supports that as well, uh, capacitor. But let's say you're running Graphite and you want metrics out of Kubernetes. What Heapster does is goes pulls all those metrics and takes them and puts them out to Graphite for you. So that's what Heapster does. It's not a monitoring system in and of itself. It's more an adapter for taking this data in the readiest format, which is all fully open, and putting it to a different monitoring system. Uh, Hawkular then is a time series database, primarily. Uh, so it's somewhere where you can store your data. Uh, so for example, Prometheus itself is only intended to be ephemeral. Uh, it's just for reliability, we don't want to rely on distributed systems, which does mean we're limited to the size of a single machine in terms of how much data you can store and how far back you can store it. But then we'd hand off to something else, maybe Hawkular, uh, maybe we've Cortex, and uh, maybe open TSDB, maybe InfluxDB for the longer term storage of data. So they're kind of complementary in that way. Of course, Ocular potentially you can use as well yourself. I haven't looked too much into it, but I know it's meant to be a distributed monitoring system for storage. So um, since you're one of the core contributors to Prometheus, can you tell us a little bit about um, that what's coming in the next release for Prometheus and what's on the road ahead? And where you... uh, well, the big thing that's coming up, like our point release, like we had 1.7 come out yesterday or today, mm -hmm. and which is largely incremental changes, uh, like with OpenStack service discovery and a slight tweak to Kubernetes service discovery. Um, and, you know, it is, but the big thing is coming up is Prometheus 2.0, which we're currently working on. And that has a new storage engine, which is far more efficient than the current one. Um, and it's also one of the things I was working on is new staleness handling, which is a semantic thing, which is important. Like right now, if a target disappears, like you stop a pod, it'll take five minutes for the data points that Prometheus ingested to stop being returned. With new staleness, that goes away much faster than that. Uh, so it takes only one to two scrape intervals. So that's much better for alerting. Um, and there'll be a few other changes as well, but Prometheus 2.0 is the big one. Also, the alert manager, uh, the think just the 070 release just out has a new UI, which has all been redone. So it's much nicer to use. So um, where are you looking for um, help on the Prometheus project? Um, <clears throat> so we, there's lots of places to help. So there's lots of integrations. If you have some tool that you wish had metrics, uh, you can add Prometheus instrumentation to them or write an exporter if that's not possible for whatever reason. So because we've already got 150 integrations, the more we have, the better. Mm -hmm. And we've also got the core repositories, there's like 25-ish of them. There's lots of bugs there that needs fixing, features that needs implementing in a variety of languages. And as well, like, it helps if you can help with user support, because as the project becomes busier, uh, it's not always possible for Prometheus team, which is about 15 people, to answer all the questions. So the more people can help with community questions as well, the better. And documentation is always good. If you want to write a blog post and have to do something, that's great because once again, the the core is like four core developers, but there's a 15 core like on the team who are commissioners, and we can't do everything. So yeah. generally, it's like, can you help with the ecosystem as well as the core? Well, uh, there's a couple of folks asking more questions, and Gary's uh, talking about integrating Yager with Open Tracing soon. So hopefully he'll have something to blog about around that. Um, Guillerme, Guillerme is asking, um, does Prometheus plan to support long-term storage of metrics? So uh, as I mentioned just there a few minutes ago, Prometheus itself is designed to be for reliability as the first goal. And re reliability means that your alerts will be received. Uh, it does not mean that all your data is safe. So Prometheus itself is more as an ephemeral cache, so it's not meant for long-term storage of metrics. So the question is, where do I store my long-term metrics, like stuff from a year ago, so I can do capacity planning? The answer is we have APIs. There is a remote write API that can just write out all the data Prometheus receives as it comes in, and then you can build a distributed system based on that to store as much data as you want. For example, uh, we have Cortex's that, uh, InfluxDB are talking about supporting that as well, and uh, possibly some other companies. And then the idea is that that will be there. And because it's a distributed system, it might be less reliable under network partitions and so on, whereas Prometheus itself keeps on alerting. And we can also read back that data as well transparently. So that's the basic plan, is that we have APIs for this. And the APIs are there now. The list is experimental because you might need to make some tweaks to them, but they fully work if you want to build something around that. 
Cool. Um, there's a couple more. There's lots of good questions today. Um, one of them is, is, does Prometheus just work with OpenShift or was there anything you had to do to integrate it with OpenShift? Uh, so uh, because OpenShift is Kubernetes, there was no work because there's already Kubernetes in, uh, integration for Prometheus. Uh, so not, we have integrations like the service discovery is the main thing, which is figuring out where are all the pods, where are all the endpoints, where are all the EC2 instances. Uh, so we've got about 10 of those now, like OpenStack was the most recently added one. Uh, we've got ones for Baraton. Uh, we've got has Nerves, no, Nerve has been added, which is an Airbnb thing. There's whatever the Twitter equivalent of that is as well. There's just like 10 of these across different systems. Azure, I think we've added GCE by now as well. But if you don't support, if we don't support your thing because it's a little too specialized or no one sent a pull request yet, there is, uh, you just basically chuck us JSON with a list of all your targets and that works too. But everything else is just normal. This is just another way to run applications. Because service mm -hmm. discovery is the only thing that's kind of special. All right, I think that answered uh, Michael's question. Um, there's one more request for a little bit of a demo. Um, can you demo how to uh, to alert on an item? Since you have okay, it. well, let me just, it's the easy way. So let me just pull up the demo. Oh God, I have an actual alert here somewhere. So this is demoed up robots reception layout. I, I'm doing weird stuff there. Uh, a simple alert looks like this. So you just go alert name, uh, example alert always firing, and just an expression, and that creates an alert. And then if I look at 9091, oh, sorry, 993, which is the, this is an old alert manager, and you can see this alerts here. And it can be routed from there uh, to email, to Slack, to PagerDuty, or whatever. But it's two separate steps. The Prometheus produces an alert, which goes to the alert manager. The alert manager takes alerts from all the Prometheus servers um, and then lets you aggregate those together into a single notification that goes to PagerDuty. So the principle being that if you have multiple Prometheus servers looking at different parts of your infrastructure, even if they're in different data centers, you can only get one notification for a problem. And that's like a key feature for reducing your paging noise. But there is, I think there's some blog posts out there showing how to do it in full. I don't have anything to hand right now. All right. Well, I think that has answered most everybody's questions. Can you, on your slide deck, show us a slide on how to contact you? I'm, I'm guessing you probably have one there or resources for. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all for me. Uh, but just go Prometheus at robustperception.io will get to me. All right. One more so, question, those I, are the official Prometheus contacts there. Oh, I just have one more question. Is it okay? It's a quickie. Ask it. Um, I'm just curious how this is tested in OpenShift. So I presume Prometheus has unit tests and there's whole testing infrastructure there. Then it's further tested into the Kubernetes community. And then from there, presumably it goes into the OpenShift community and more testing occurs. And then um, OpenShift QE, you know, does productized, you know, testing of the productized bits. So is that how the testing accountabilities lay out here approximately? So actually, um, integration testing is one of those things that we'd love help on with Prometheus. Uh, so a lot of this stuff, uh, like it's tested by people doing canaries and so on, but we are talking about how to do proper integration testing because a lot of the time we discover bugs when there's bad code. Okay, so, uh, where, so that, that is something that would be good to have help with. So just clearly, it's integration testing of Prometheus into Kubernetes? Yeah, or, in that case, yeah. But the problem is with something like Azure service discovery, we need to run Azure. With EC2 service discovery, we need an EC2. With Marathon, we need to set up Marathon. And having then all these integrations is a lot of work and figuring out how to maintain those. So that's definitely something we would like assistance with for those who are you know, that way inclined. Okay, so I'm definitely inclined, particularly on the integration testing, I mean, into OpenShift. Um, yeah, yeah. But if you want to go, the Prometheus developers list is there, if you want to chime in there, because I know it's something we really want to do, uh, because we've been bitten more than we would like by regressions. Yeah, and there's okay, definitely, okay. definitely yeah, folks on the, the OpenShift team um, that can I can point you to Michael if you drop me an email um, that have been playing with and working with and testing Prometheus for use. Um, oh, so. 
Okay, so there yeah. are people at Red Hat testing this integration. Yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not sure. Like, we're not productizing Prometheus um, in any way at Red Hat, but I, I know people are using it. So, um, and have been testing with it. So, it, it definitely drop me a note, yeah. and I'll see if I can hook you up with them. Okay. And yeah. I'm just curious. You mentioned regressions and integration. I, I mean, I see code problems. I'm in QE, so I'm just curious. Where is the fragility, or where where are the issues? Is there like a a bit? So it's category? normally with uh, well integrations with external systems. Is normally it, such as service discovery, because a lot of them, their API docs aren't great, and the semantics of some of their fields that they return aren't great, and it's not clear exactly what's going on, and the error handling can be undocumented, and we only discover it when it breaks. But especially when you're talking to like a cloud provider, like you know Azure, GCE, uh, EC2, you know you only can only discover some problems when they happen to someone. So those are very hard for us to test, and also if we have to get an account with everyone. You know, we're an open source project. On the other hand, uh, we've got things like Null Exporter, which is our machine monitor. Uh, so how do we test the free BSD integrations when no, none of us run free at BSD? Or the open BSD integrations and all those sort of questions. So figuring out how to test all this stuff. Like I know, because uh, we're packaged in Debian by Mark and Ferrari, that's discovered a few bugs in our locking stuff because it breaks on ARM. So that's not tests we run ourselves because we're all 64-bit uh, x86. So being able to expand our testing infrastructure will be quite useful, and especially your integrations with Kubernetes and OpenShift, because a lot of our users are on that. Okay, and just one last question. I don't want to stretch this out too long. I'm just curious on the relationship between Prometheus and your new company, or robustperception.io, just what the... Yeah, what the... Uh, so Prometheus, it's an independent open source project. No one company controls it, and I'm one of the core developers. And then separately, Robust Perception is my company, and we do consulting and support for Prometheus. Uh, so that's okay. the relationship. Like Robust Perception, we sponsored PromCon both years now, um, and you know, we help the community in all sorts of ways. We contribute development time, and then we're going, you know, trying to make money off consulting and support off Prometheus, which is largely working. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. And one more question came in, and actually, it's a good one. Uh, maybe to end on now that um, Prometheus is under the CNCF, uh, what benefits have you found being part of the CNCF? Is that helping grow the project? Uh, yes, it, it does help to grow the project. It gives us, uh, it's easier to talk to the other projects as well and all work towards the cloud native vision uh, because you know each of us are seeing similar issues but in different ways around people getting ready for the idea of cloud native and how you have to move away from the older mindsets from when every machine was special. Mm -hmm. uh, as well, like being help a lot with marketing and uh, just general advice on how to run an open source project because there's some very experienced people there. Yeah, no, you found that it's been pretty helpful too for lots of things and there's lots of new things coming under the CNCF uh, and they're all part and parcel of what we're trying to integrate with it, OpenShift and with it into the OpenShift ecosystem and it's been really helpful for us to have that connectivity um, and will be will you be coming to the Austin event in, um, in uh, no no I'm trying to cut down my travel after doing too much last year ah, I, but hopefully um, we'll get some of these um, demos and with Jagger and other things um, through the CFP process this time for KubeCon um, in Austin mm -hmm. and we'll see some more integration work yeah, I, I think someone from us is going to be there yeah I'm, I'm sure I know at least Alexis will be there. He can't get out of it. Um, so and he's, he's, he's been de demoing Prometheus through Weave for quite some time. So um, there'll, be, there'll definitely be a few folks. So anyways, I want to say thank you very much. Great presentation. I will be putting this and a PDF of the slide deck up on the OpenShift blog at blog.openshift.com, as well as I will dig around for all of the references for the blog posts that Brian has mentioned and um, put the links to those as well there. So it usually takes a day or two to edit the videos, but thank you all for your questions and um, take a look at the events calendar on commons.openshift.org for the upcoming ones. We're going to two days a week. So if you have a topic you wanna to hear about, um, we're gonna do Wednesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Pacific. So let me know and I will coerce, stalk and um, bribe people to come and talk just like Brian has today. So. Thanks again, Brian, and um, we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you.